Hey there, this is Yuen again from Science Kimono. Welcome back to my channel. Today I will be taking you through the very types of obi that there are there. Just a little about the history. Uh, obi in itself were in like hundreds and hundreds of years ago were just ordinary cords. Just simple cords that you would tie around you know, your waist and that's it. Over time they began to grow longer, wider and kind of form the, yeah, the types that we have now. Obi in itself, there are quite a bit of types. I think, don't get me, but there are, I think, around 15. Don't get me around about the number, I'm not exactly sure, but I will t take you through the most common types of Obi that are used nowadays that you will most likely to come across about when you're buying one. So, Let's go. So this is the very first type of orbi that I wanted to show you. Nowadays this one is used as well the most formal orbi. This one is called a Fukuro orbi. It's mainly characterized by an unlined and patterned side. This unpatterned part won't be showing when you're wearing this kind of orbi. And also the inside is unpatterned. That's quite typical for an Fukuro orbi. A uh, Maru orbi, which is even more formal than this and this one. Technically it's not used that often anymore, mainly at weddings. But that one will have the other side of the orbi patterned as well. This one is actually over four meters long. Well, that's just as long as this one. Yes, it's a little the way in the back. So that one is like 4.7 meters long. This is also a Fukuro orbi, this is a Hakata. I believe that's pronounced it, don't pin me on down it like that. This one is like unlined for more early summer weddings, it's quite flimsy. But it's woven very tight, you can kind of wear it as is. Just show you a close up. That's the Fukuro one. Now let's go on to the Nagoya Obi. So there you have a Nagoya Obi. The reason why I've put up more than just one example, is the most regular one is this one, is because there are more types of Nagoya Obi in the way that they are constructed. Not really specifying the type of Nagoya Obi, but the construction of it, like the normal one, that's this one, will have a wider part and a thinner part. This part will wrap around your belly. It's more convenient because it is soon like a triangle here. This part is just soon closed and it makes tying much more convenient and easier for that part. Just me on that. <laughs> we have also the Hoya Obi that are have that as well, but just this very edge. Not not quite much. Like again, this part is soon close, and you would still fold this part. Maybe I can show you. and then wrap it around you. Not sure if this has a specific name or not. There you can see it. And this last one, this black one, 
is uh, open it. A royal bee. It does look much like a fukuro one, but the length is more similar to that one as to a fukuro bee. Again, it has an unpatent side, unpatent part, sorry. But the, again, the length is what makes it a Nahoya Obi. This one, Nahoya Obi, are, in my opinion, the most used types of Obi, along with the Han Haba, which I will show you next. So, these are Han Haba Obi, which means half with Obi. They are mostly worn with yukata and informal kimono, like common and such. The reason why I wanted to have put up two of these is because they are different. As you can see, one is just one layer and this one has two layers. Which means that this is more of a yukata obi. Um, this is one more for common. They can be used interchangeably though, but if you're going for a correct kitsuke, I'd re recommend to not use this one for yukata and this one for common, but that's up to you though. And this, this one is exactly as the one I'm wearing now, just a more pinkish one. And then uh, there's one more that I wanted to show you, so I'll grab those for a second. So this is the final one that I wanted to show you. This is called a Tsuke Obi, which is commonly known as a two-piece Obi. This part will wrap around your belly and this one will end up in the backside as the otaiko section, which is one of the most common knots. Tsuke Obi come in various shapes, shapes and sizes, but yeah, this is how it would end up. The most common that I've, that you will find is for yukata, which have just like just this part and then a a bow tie, which has two loops at either end. That one will be most likely familiar, as that one is most common that you find. You wouldn't. You would find this one, but if you search, I think you're most likely going to hit on the yukata one rather than this type. Again, Tuke Obi come in so much shapes and sizes and well, what they do have a come, they always will include this part that wraps around. Because uh, yeah, in the end, it has two ties that will end up sticking behind here. So there you go, this is just that's okay, Obi. So there you go, I hope you find it quite informative and I hope you learn something from it. Again, if you have any questions about it, don't hesitate to, uh, to ask me. I'm uh, happy to give a little more information about it. Before we go, I wanted to show you one more, which is called an upside down Obi. Yes, <laughs> I know it sounds strange, but it really is like that. I have one here. The actual pattern is like this. Yes, it's upside down because. Wear it like this. At least the this is the end, so it will become like this. But you have to tie it quite differently in order to get it like this, which is the correct way it should have been. This one is actually quite a thick obi, so it, I suppose it's for winter. But then again, this is how obi have just developed differently. It's kind of almost funny, I would say, I wouldn't, I don't know if funny is the right word, but it's, and still it's, 
There is such a difference between shape, sizes, colors, type of fabric, type of weave, and, and all. So, again, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.